everyone to another episode of the Definitive Crusade. I'm your host, Joining Machine Hughes, and joining me this time is the returning. It's the random dude. <laughs> <laughs> dude. How Wait, you is this not a magic term? I'm oh, <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I'm yeah, I've got I've got no cards to trade. I'm sorry, dude. Yeah. <sighs> No, I'm excited to be back. It has yes. been a hot second since I've been on the show. Yeah, I, I, you are more than welcome back to the folds. Um, well, I, I appreciate that. I, I'm excited to be back. Um, you know, NFL season's over. The XFL's over. I got my butt handed to me in a magic tournament yesterday. I, I hear that, I hear that chess, to- chess season's just around the corner. Oh, 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 oh! You know, I, I I like the way you're thinking. Um, <laughs> for all of you watching, stay tuned. You never know what may happen. It's just the craziness of the Undercover Caves Podcast Network. Yeah, anything with a C in it is open Ooh. for uh, business. Just saying. All right, okay. So we have four <laughs> four books to go through. Uh, one of them is there for a couple of weeks old, the others are all from last week. Um, so we're kind of going to go start at the top and work our way down. Um, I have kind of been on the fence about the whole storyline, I'm not gonna lie, but this last issue absolutely, I think, nails everything that we love about uh Batman. This is Batman 135. It is actually Legacy Issue 900. So if you want to get your legacy numbers in order, knock yourself out. So this is written by Chip Zdarsky. Uh, art uh, for, I suppose, the alternative Gotham is uh, Mike Hawthorne, who's been on the book a couple of a few months now. Uh, Jorge Jimenez is back. Mike Michael Jenin is back. Adriano uh, didn't be Dito joins them both on inks. Tommy uh, uh, Tomo Murray is on colours. Romalo Fajardo Jr. helps out. And, of course, Clayton Cowles is around on letters. Now, yeah. with the Flash movie just around the corner and Marvel doing its many Spider-Man of Spider-Man first thing, it's about time that Bat's got some love as well. And this is how you do it right. Josh, mm-hmm. what do you love about this book? I, okay, having kind of jumped into the book without having read a lot of the previous books uh-huh. i was like okay i i had a few questions like why did batman lose his hand i mean nbd um but as i was reading through i was able to really kind of get caught up on everything mm-hmm. the cameos in this book spot on were so awesome now the one thing I want to note, especially with the panels you were just on, if you notice, there's even a callback to the Batman when Stanley, what if Stanley created the Batman? Because the style of those monsters uh, are honestly kind of based off of well, Stanley's version. I was so, at the comics at the time of that round, so I have no idea. Oh, I, I, I love that one. I bought it when it first came out, so. Um, I have an original printing. Um, I'm not going to lie, Punchline kind of reminds me of uh, uh, what's her face from uh, the the Crime Syndicate. Oh, right, yeah, Superwoman. Yeah, yeah. That that's what she reminds me of. Um, again, Alfred in this. Alfred being Alfred. Um, I, honestly, Alfred was was great in this. Mm-hmm. Thoroughly enjoyed it. But when when we go through the multiverse in this in this issue, that's that's what sealed the deal for me. Yeah, this is a yeah. I mean, the, the story is, I suppose, the main story of Batman stopping the Red Mask from creating all the Jokers across the multiverse. That's what the main thrust is. And to do that, he ends up getting himself lost in the multiverse because never trust Selena. Um, what we end up getting for our book is a plethora of different um, Batmans. Batmans? Mm-hmm. Batman? 
back dudes. Ah, what else? So he ends up, <laughs> yeah, Dark Knight. So he ends up going through the machine unprepared, um, and therefore he would get to see all the different versions that we have known to love. So in this book alone, you get Batman eighty nine, you get mm -hmm. Red Rain, you get Gotham by Gaslight, you get the sixties, you get Batman the animated series, you get Arkham City, Arkham Asylum, Batman, you get Bats Beyond, you get Gaslight again, you get Kingdom Come, you get Injustice Batman. You get Batman 66, and you get the Dark Knight Returns. I know. And the, the fact that, like, with Batman 89, I mean, we're getting, this is post-89, but before Batman Returns. Yes. You and you can tell by the, the logo, by the yeah, album. exactly. And that, and you know, thank God, because that Batman 89 comic series, man, that was sucker really, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Red Rain is a, is a book, um, Doug Munch and Kelly Jones, Batman is a Vampire. It was massive back in the 80s. Mm, yeah, so no, I remember that one. Good to see a, a throwback to that. Um, Gotham by Gaslight at the top. We've got the 60s there. Um, now, is that I, the 60s or would that be more the 50s? Maybe the 50s. Maybe the 50s, yeah. I, I was going to say, that, that looks more like late 50s as far as... Because of the yeah, man, yeah. especially the way that the Joker's designed. Yeah. Okay. You know, oh, the, of course, he's wearing his Batman utility belt, isn't he? Yeah. He's wearing his Joker utility belt. So, um, so we got Bataz. Absolutely great shout out to Arkham City. Oh yeah. And the Arkham no, that, 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 that was my. That was perfect. Um, thankfully, they went this version, not the Arkham Knight version. Yeah. Because, as I said earlier, Sakurumi. I don't like the Arkham Knight game. I really don't. I, I don't. The the overemphasis on the Batmobile was kind of a stinker. Yeah, and then we get old Groom, Grumpy Chops himself, uh, mm -hmm. Bruce Wayne, uh, and Terry McGinnis uh, are back. And of course, it's this Bruce Wayne that kind of manages to start putting the pieces together to help our Bruce Wayne. Of course, it is. Who else would it be, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then we get some more Joker, we get some Terry action. Uh, here's a couple of pages. So you've got if that was the 50s, that must be the 60s. Then you've got yeah, that, that one's definitely 60s, and, and you can tell by the bat signal in the back, yeah, because it's on the style that was run the through TV the credits show. during the yeah. classic TV show. Um, I had that down as uh, as Gotham by Gaslight again. Yep. Kingdom Come is a Kingdom Come is a nice little uh, shout out there. Yep. Yeah, and of course, Injustice Batman. That that was fun to see. I I enjoyed seeing. Yeah. They tied that. The fact that they tied the video games into this, you know, Injustice and Arkham City, probably the two best video games. But I mean, this panel right here. Bravo. It's see, I. I I didn't think of this. That is a bravo, by the way. You're absolutely right. That is just peachy. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. um, however, the best part of this Batman... Ooh, come on, the, next comes page, on the next page. <laughs> so we have some no, Dark not, Knight... Not the next page, but... I know. Yeah. We have some Dark Knight uh, Returns stuff going on. Uh, kudos to everyone who is actually aping styles here. All right? Because this is obviously we're going for the the styles of the artists of the time as well. Um, yeah. Some good old Frank Miller. I I love. I absolutely love the new suit. Yeah, the new bat suit. It is a combination of all the Batman's throughout the multiverse. Definitely, and that's what we love about it. And this is it. There you go. Oh, right. I showed I, I showed this to my wife when I was reading. I was like, look. He's bumped into Batman 66. And she looked at me and went, Shark Repel and Bat Spray. I was like, yeah, baby. Well, yeah. And, and the fact that Batman even says, and you can see it on the panel here if you're watching yeah. on, on uh, YouTube, Meta Batman, more prepared than I am. Yeah. Boom. Like, what a nod. And, like, paying respect to Adam West and the classic TV series. Yeah. I don't think he could get any better than this moment right here well you'd say that you would say that but when he finally wins the battle as you know he's batman 
and now he's lost there's no way he can get back to his universe where there's a batman there must always be a robin um, and i think the tim drake oh, okay, okay. Safety, I... uh, the whole thing just put an absolute perfect little bow on this because it's tim drake that always believes bruce is alive it was tim drake back when he got shot by dark side who thought he was alive you know so yeah i think the whole book so, just works so so, so well. i know you haven't I, I know you haven't played uh gotham knights no oh, i haven't because i have i don't have a playstation 5. i know mm. but the the idea that tim always believes that batman will come back mm. that that whole idea and feeling just resonates all throughout the game and tim in that game does that so well mm. so that yeah no i i wholeheartedly agree this this was like the best way to finish a story mm. and then the, yeah th this panel i i love this one this mm. was great yeah i love um i, I just yeah, I love version <laughs> yeah i, I just I, see when when chip Zdarsky started with the whole fail safe storyline mm -hmm. he it was frenetic it was pacey he wrote himself into a corner um and then we ended up getting like an alternative universe batman which was fun to an extent i think he's absolutely nailed it with this one i think the, the actual you've got the conclusion of the story you've got every batman that anyone could possibly want to see and you've got batman and robin back together again i don't i don't know if you're a batman fan and don't know how you're not loving this issue i don't know yeah i i also love seeing the uh the version the keaton version of the uh, of the, this type of batman this would be one if they were to do a, a live action movie with the zur and ra mm -hmm. batman to have michael keaton do this version <laughs> i mean let, let's be honest we'd honestly get like a mashup between beetlejuice and batman in one well, you know that sounds a lot like the joke, the, the Batman who laughs. I'm not sure I want to see that. Thank you. Uh, no, no, that's Judge Death. Ah, <laughs> oh, you remember? It's been a while, but you remember, sir. Well how, done. How can I, I tip forget? my hat? <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, this, this book was a phenomenal read, and definitely one that if you love the the multiverse the, of, of Batman. Yeah. This is one to go to your your local comic book store, pick this one up. This is one that has to go into your collection. I tell you how I, I'll let you the secret. So we get we have one, we get digital copies of the books so we can do the shows. If you remember I'm in the UK, so I'm not gonna get DC, don't send me their books. Although we should. Um so the Batman 135, when it came out, it was one of the books that I saw. And I knew we'd talk about it, but I actually went and read the actual comic. I made the time to sit and read the comic. And that's one of those ones flipping the pages for yeah, the app. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And it works so well if you're doing that sort of thing. You know, not against digitals. You know, I get it. Digital, there's a whole bunch of people like digitals. Hell, I love digitals when I'm on an airplane, but you know. Yeah, but for if you're going to pick up the actual book, the Batman 135 is definitely, mm. it, it is a must. Therefore, totally, wholeheartedly agree. All right, so, um, the dawn of DC reinvigorates, reinvents, restarts, reintroduces, retreads, repeat, reuse, recycle, whichever word you want to use, some classic characters. And this time around, we are back with green lantern um mm -hmm. so there's a two for on this one so you get two stories for the price of you price of uh, one hmm. um so written green lantern one the first part is a hal jordan story written by jeremy adams um art by i'm gonna say it's a man manico i might have said it wrong i apologize romulo fajardo jr's on colors again getting lots of money for dc this time <coughs> excuse me david chaps on letters um 
Philip K. Johnson of Superman writing fame, uh, writes the John Stewart pages with Montos on art. Adriana Lucas is on colors. Dave Sharp pulls double duty on letters. Um, this was your choice. Yeah, and I, I, know, I, I know. And I, I know there's a whole bunch of people on the pod, or not on the pod, who actually detest Green Lanterns. So this is a brave choice, not knowing who was going to turn up as <laughs> to, to go with Green Lantern. Right. <laughs> well, okay. So I, I have been, if you've been longtime fans of the show, you know that I have been very, very critical of Green Lantern. Previous books I have not liked. The art has just been too wonky for me. It's just, it, it's it's out there. And so I was like, you know what? Let's give this a shot. Let me see. Because honestly, because it kind of had a number one, that was kind of like why I was like, okay, let, let's see how this goes. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm well, not going for you. Well, okay. So it was it wasn't horrible. But it wasn't Batman 135 fantastic where I was happy-go-lucky um, after the end of it. So the the universe, as far as the lanterns are concerned, is all kind of in array. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's no real lanterns around, and it has been decided that uh, Sector 2834? Two eight one four. Two eight one four. I'm so close. There's just twenty <laughs> sectors off. It's fine. Two eight one four is space, the most no volatile. Can, in space, no one can hear you. Uh, Google Maps, apparently. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Elon Musk hasn't created a search engine yeah. for all the sectors within at, the universe. At the star, take the next left. At the right. gravity well, please avoid. <laughs> <laughs> Going through the gravity well will result in taking you to Neverland. <laughs> so there's no Green Lanterns, especially on Earth, but lo and behold, Hal Jordan, great Earth's mightiest protector, is back. And woo, woo. this this book to me was like if they did a reboot of uh, the Green Lantern franchise with Ryan Reynolds mm -hmm. as Hal Jordan. This, this is how that book read to me. It was it was entertaining. It was everything you would kind of expect from a reboot. Isn't how Jordan My, do Green Lantern? Oh yeah. Um I I appreciated the fact that we didn't get the overly wall to wall colors that we would normally get from a, a Green Lantern book. You know, it was all on Earth. Mm. And it was nice. It was great. It was wonderful. Where my issue was further on in the story, you know, we get to see Hal Jordan be a pilot. But my problem with it was I've already seen this scene before. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do Is it Top Gun Maverick? Yeah, they yeah. literally have Hal Jordan start off by saying, good morning, aviators. <laughs> I did not have Nathan Fillion, Nathan Fillion's voice in my head. I had Tom Cruise's voice in my head. Yeah. He flies right through the two other planes. They both go like this way. I was kind of waiting for, um, for everyone to be like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, even flying through the kingdom, like, come on, guys. I've already seen this. I mean, did you really love Top Gun Maverick that much? I hate it. I absolutely That you had it. to recreate it in the book? I absolutely have no time for Top Gun Maverick. Don't get me like, wrong. I love Top Gun, the first one. But Maverick. Like, I was waiting, waiting for, you know, Phoenix and Bob to be in one plane and Goo or uh, Rooster to be in another and Hangman to show up. I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> but for a Green Lantern book, it was better than previous books that I've read. Um, I did get a kick out of uh, 
I don't I don't know, Johnny, if you noticed this, but I did see Sinestro. I saw Sinestro at the bar. Yes. I saw Sinestro. Yes, we did. You know, it was that, it, it's a reboot. It's a reboot book of the the Hal Jordan Green Lantern. Very so if, if you were to do there he is, bottom page. Yeah. If they were to call it like Green Lantern Returns, not Superman Returns, but Green Lantern Returns. Here we go. Okay. The only difference is, I hope to God we don't have a child of Hal Jordan. Cool. <laughs> so my views, my views are actually on par with yours on this one. To be fair, um, I've I've seen Hal Jordan return from space and beg Carol for a job so many times that this is absolutely a non-starter for me. I love Green Arrow. Green Arrow stuck in the multiverse on a different planet. And it doesn't fit his character particularly well because it's Green Arrow, he's a ground, grounded character. But at least he's trying something different. This is just the same old Hal Jordan. And if you think about it, the Earth Green Lanterns, of which let's just count them, let's count them as Hal, Guy, John, Mm -hmm. uh, Simon, Jessica. Yep. Five damn five Green Lanterns there. Why are we always focused on this douchebag doing exactly the same things he's done before? Again, I think it's because of the fact that he's he's the first as far as Earth. Well, no, let me take that back. He's the first human. Hmm. To to be that, so he's kind of that cornerstone. I mean, look look at our backdrop. Who's standing next in between Wonder Woman and Aquaman? It's not John Stewart. It's not Jessica Cruz. It's Hal Jordan. But it could be any of them. This is what I'm saying. In the Justice League cartoon, it's John Stewart. Again, I think, and again, this is just my my perception of it. DC is trying to bring everything back to kind of the core characters. All right, well, fair enough. But, I mean, don't don't tease us by saying the Earth Green Lanterns. If you want to go back to it, then actually take the power. I want to see Jessica. I think she's been done wrong for, for a number of years. Oh, a- absolutely. And when she was the breakout character of, of um, the New 52, and yeah. now, now it barely exists. Unbelievable. You talk about diversity. There's a natural, diverse character that is you, same with Simon to an extent, a naturally yeah. diverse character, and you you don't you don't go there because you're greenwashed with this guy all the time. And then, <clears throat> as much as I love Philip Kennedy on Superman, um, this whole John Stewart going back to his Mars place screams like um, Winter Soldier and the Falcon. When Sam goes back to look after his sister's boat, yeah, because he's failed as a superhero. Um, there is some space shenanigans going on, so we get to see a couple of green lanterns in there. Um, I don't know, man. Don't know if the United is it the United Planets that have decreed that the uh, green lanterns. Yeah, the the yeah. United Planets. They're they're the ones that had determined decided that earth was the most volatile and disbanded the guardians of the universe well if that leads to if that leads to the legion of superheroes that's fine i'm happy with that yeah you know? um but still you've got a question if the uh if uh earth being has been kicked out of the green lantern car because he doesn't want to be part of that how can we still got a power in um but I guess the I, truth will I truth will come through, come out. The truth will set us free. Uh, you know that's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he keeps it. The truth will the truth truth will out. All right. Okay. Time for one of our breaks. And hmm, she isn't here. She's spending time with her fam on uh, Mother's Day as we are Which, recording. at the time of recording. Yeah, yeah. Which it is Mother's Day. Shout out to all of the moms out there. Uh, we Jeez. we definitely appreciate everything you do. So, and uh, keep your eyes open for an episode of the Old Timers 
comic book show which features some actual um, mums that we're talking about in comic books who have been the backbone of our characters that we love so much. Your, your guess is good as my how many Martha's turn up. Don't I, I'm saying. so glad oh, you no. said that there's plenty of moms that show up and not old timers because <sighs> I, I think on that note, just so okay. anyhow, this Freya, okay. this is for you. If you're watching the pod later, this is for you. Enjoy. I'd like to be able to dance like a K-popper. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. No, if, if you haven't listened to K-pop Cosmos, you really should. It, it's a great show. Uh, Mark and Freya, they do a phenomenal job. And even if you're not a big fan of K-pop, really take the opportunity to check out that show because they do a great job explaining it. They talk about the music. And you never know. You may even start to wander into that genre and and find something you love to so definitely check it out more fishnets please freya just want to say that all right okay um, along. <laughs> right next book um hot off the title of the monkey prince um we have this next new book that looks to incorporate magic and uh, different cultures into the <coughs> universe it is matthew's pick and we're not saying the book is so bad we'd stop Matthew being on the show, but still. Hmm. All right, okay, so this is uh, Spirit World number one. You might have seen the freebie comic that was around on free comic book day. Um, it's written by Alyssa Wong. Uh, Hanning is on art. Sebastian Cheng is on colours. And Janice Chang is on letters. If I have mispronounced anybody's name on that, I sincerely apologise. It is not my intent to get it wrong, but hey ho, what can I do? I'm a Brit. <laughs> that, that, that's that's our saying. Hey ho, hey ho. <laughs> is that the editor? Uh, okay, on that note, um, what did we think of Spirit World number one? The colors were nice. <laughs> I've heard that for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. I want to know why the characters got uh, magic soul sword on the cover. Okay, so uh, I there was so much going on with this. I I feel like I was reading an anime, like a, a manga type book I think that included to. John Constantine. Which okay, that that kind of made it a little, little better for me. And Cassandra's Batgirl was in there. Mm -hmm. Um, but I I don't know this this genre. I I struggle with. I just, I've never been able to really get into it. There was so much going on. This is honestly kind of like a a hodgepodge of different genres just being thrown into a bowl, mix it up, throw some fairy dust on it, and poof, there you go. <laughs> poof. <laughs> but, I mean, to have John Constantine in there, what that, that was entertaining. Well, is it though? Is it? I mean, I don't want to be I don't want to be a neggy Nigel on this, but But you're definitely Luke, being a Nigel. Uh, other than look <coughs> apart from looking the part, is this really John Constantine? 
Uh, no, because he was not swearing enough. So he wasn't swearing, he wasn't drinking, and he wasn't smoking. Now, this is like the Teen Titans Go version of John Constantine. You would know, you Teen Titans. You know what? You know what, Johnny? <laughs> How about you take that Dolphins offense and shove it? <clears throat> Only because what? You, the Denver Broncos don't have an offense? No, 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 no. What, what, what's, what, what's Russell Wilson say? Broncos country, let's ride. <laughs> you shut, you shut your horn up. <laughs> let's ride. Let's ride. Uh, let's what ride. did I come back to? Yeah, you started the football talk. <laughs> we made the playoffs. Did you make the playoffs? We made the playoffs without a quarterback. Did you make the playoffs with a quarterback? Um. Yeah, back in the 90s. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear God. You you know okay so again for people who've never watched the show if you can tell that a book struggles when we quickly divert to football talk and really we're taking advantage of the opportunity because one Frey is not here so she will give us hell for it yeah yeah that's true but I, I just the dolphins lost the draft I'm saying that for sure. Um, I I struggled with this with this one. I'm not gonna I'm not well, gonna sugarcoat it. Well, when magic's involved in the DC universe, my interest is like ooh magic, and then ooh, there's, Vatana, ooh fishnet, and then there's no and then there's no Satana. I'm like, well, that's 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 like having a that's like having a I don't know a story set in Gotham and not having more pointers around. It's like. Uh, isn't, that, isn't that every uh, Suicide Squad book? Yeah, pretty much. Um, there's a reason we don't talk about them either. Um, good to see Cassandra. What makes me laugh is he turns around and said, oh, Batgirl, Batgirl can look after herself. That's what Constantine says. Which Batgirl? There's three of them. There's yeah. like Cass, Steph, and Babs. Which one is he alluding to? The I, I would assume this one's probably cast because she's in the book, but I don't know. I know, but John Constantine hadn't met her at that point, and the other character was just like saying Batgirl. It's like which Batgirl? Yeah, I I don't I don't know. And anyway. this crazy villain with the the lo- elongated neck. I'm sorry, but that's like a female crossover of Beetlejuice. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. Uh, some of the Cassandra art was great. I like seeing Cassandra. Do, yeah. She is in here as the talking Asian character from DC proper. That's the only reason it's this one. Um, there's no need for her as with her fighting skills to be kind of even considered as as magic. It would have made more sense for Steph to be on it to be to be in here to be honest with her positive outlook that she has and stuff. Um, that also then leads to um, Cass being a, a lot more talkative than she normally is mm-hmm. for some reason. With complete strangers, uh, taking off a mask with complete strangers. Um, I don't know. It's you're absolutely right when you said it's a hodgepodge of ideas. Now I'm all for people trying different things, and you know what? This book pro- it probably isn't aimed at us, Josh. It's probably you know it's it, it's the DC's enemy attempt. Crowd. Yeah, it's, it's DC's attempt to to bring in the manga crowd or the anime crowd. Uh, but trying to mix some anime manga elements with the dc universe proper um and you know what if, if they're doing that to try and boost sales i totally don't mind it's, it's what they're about um it just shows that not every book is for everybody mm-hmm. and you know dc are trying different things you know if you like monkey prince you're probably going to love this I, that's a stretch because let, let's be honest we love monkey at well, least I enjoyed Monkey Prince. There we go. I yeah, enjoyed Monkey Prince. How critical would Freya be of this? So I think next episode we're gonna have to do a follow up, and we have to get Freya's take on this book. Oh, that means I've got to look at the book twice. No, no, no. We don't. Uh, Freya does. <laughs> we just talk about it, and we ask her her thoughts. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe we'll get a Freya rant. We are. To be fair, we are never far from a Freya rant. It is true. Yeah. Um. So, as I say, if you like 
this sort of thing, this is going to be right up your street. But for me, I'm a hard pass on that. Just purely yeah. because it's not aimed at me. It's fine. You know, if you want it, if you want to, you enjoy it, go get it by all means. Um, I'm all for that. Um, all right. We're up to our final book. Man, that flew around quick. Um, um, I picked I this like one. Spirit World just flew by. Yeah. Um, I picked this book because I knew Josh was coming back on the show. And Josh loves himself. Some Batman the Animated Series. As, as we do all. Correct, Josh? Yes, yeah, this is definitely more off of, uh, what, season four? <laughs> yep. So this is the Batman Adventures Continues Class of Season 3, for some reason, written by Alan Burnett and Paul Dini of the animated uh, series fame. Ty Templeton is there on art. Uh, Monica Cabana is on colours, and Josh Reed provides the letters. Um, before we get into this book, there is something going on with it that makes me a little bit disappointed. Um, I, I, I think I, I think I know where you're going with this. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Why in the okay. hell are we getting Harley Quinn on the cover in the classic Harley Quinn costume? But we go into the book and we don't get that. Nope, that's not it. Oh, damn it. <clears throat> Good effort, though. Now, if but you remember... That, that was my issue with it. <laughs> If you remember, Batman Season 4, or the new Batman Adventures, which is before this season, um, Barbara Gordon had become a major player, uh, a major part of the, the Bat team, right? And she was always walking around in an outfit that's very similar to the one that's on this page here, but with stupid heels on, because that's what characters did in comic books, right? So what, why is she wearing Crocs? And why is she wearing Crocs here? Now, I get this is aimed at kids predominantly, but if you are trying to get the fans of the show to like it, then you should respect the show enough to put in what should be there. That's mm. what I'm saying. And you might, and people might think, oh, what's he? He's always banging on about fishnets and heels and stuff. Look, that's how the character was, and that's how the character should be. Yeah, in my head. So uh, I'll, I'll bring up again for people who may not have seen any of the the particular show. I don't know what rock you're living under. <laughs> yeah. Haven't seen what? Batman the Animated Series. Uh, uh, but there, you know, there, there's the that recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh hey. my hell, look, she's wearing heels. Da, da, da. Yeah, from the animated series, that is the Barbara Gordon we know and love. Indeed. Anyway, back to the book. <laughs> <laughs> So here we go. It's just the Suicide Squad's in this for some reason. Um, you're absolutely right. I didn't even twig that it was different Harleys on the on the thing. Um, some convoluted plot about having to go through the Joker hideouts because he's stolen one of uh, Hugo Strange mad inventions. Um, and then it's chaos personified. I don't know about you, Josh, but I thought this book was absolutely wordy. As anything for for what's based on a cartoon show. Mm -hmm. No, I I would agree. It was definitely it, it had the feeling of the uh, a season four episode. <laughs> I like <laughs> season Avengers. four. There's, there's some really good episodes in season four. So the the reason why I I say that was you look at you know seasons one and two. Um, it was a lot a lot darker, mm -hmm. a lot more serious. Mm -hmm. By the time we roll into season three and going into season four, it was a little more lighthearted. Still dark, mm -hmm. but a little more lighthearted. You look at the exchange between Robin and Hugo Strange, mm. and they're they're kind of bickering like little kids, and then that's when Batman has to step in. I found that bit awkward because in my head, in Batman the Animated Series, Hugo Strange is a villain from the outset. Yeah. Whereas in the Batman, Hugo Strange starts out as being quite a um, a help, albeit yeah. uh, to to everyone. Although eventually shows his true spots and becomes a bit of a bit of a villain. 
Um, yeah, but so you, I, you can still see that there's the distrust between at least Robin and Hugo Strange. Mm. Batman's not really saying anything until he has to, mm. um, because Batman's just doing his Batman thing. I I, I don't know. It, it was an interesting exchange in the conversation. Mm -hmm. I just, I just, we looked at one not so long ago, um, um, a Batman animated series book. And I said that back then the story was too simple. I was like, no, this this is this isn't work. It's too simple, you know, it doesn't work. And now this one seems too complicated. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah there, there was so much going on, and I don't know the whole this whole exchange with the Batmobile. I was like, how can he pick it up? But if uh, Batman were to have the Batmobile run right into Bane, it would knock his ass over. Yeah. I don't understand also this Robin looks like um, the Grayson Robin. Yeah, nice, which that, nice, that should nice be one. Tim Drake. Yeah, and I think it is, it is Tim Drake. Yeah, oh, it, it, is, it is Tim, but apparently that panel was tied more towards Dick Grayson rather than Tim. And I just think, oh. I know they're trying to... I don't know. The Suicide Squad, I'm just... <sighs> I'm tired of seeing it. I, I realized that they're also kind of making a push mm. with the Suicide Squad, given the fact that there's a major video game that will be coming out and it's all around. Uh, Who just is it Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League or something? No, the premise is Brainiac has taken over the minds of the Justice League. Right. And so. Amanda Waller has tasked the Suicide Squad to take out the Justice League. Oh, okay. It, it's a game you can pass on. But, I mean, th this is taking essentially two, two worlds. You've got the Suicide Squad, which is a, a franchise of the future, mm -hmm. Batman the animated series, and trying to meld it together. Unfortunately, in my opinion, it doesn't work Mm. As well as I, I think the concepts would have kind of like the the Batman eighty nine comic when they brought in the the Marlon Wayans version of Robin. Uh, <laughs> is this the introduction of the Batman Beyond Bat suit? The yeah, the first iteration of it. Yes, massively. Cost yeah, why why does he have to have light up panels over his butt? Well, just, yeah. Just in case, uh, you know, they ever make a Joel Schumacher movie out of it. Oh, God. I don't know. Uh, Moving along. Um, I expected more from this. What, do you remember the original Batman animated, uh, Batman Adventures comic book? Yeah. The, when it first it came out. Of course it was great. Why? Because it, it, it was similar to the cartoon short. You knew what you were getting. Yeah. Big, big bold pencils, big panels, um, characters that did what you'd expect them to do, common sense stories. Um, the whole thing worked. This, uh, it's just, I don't know, it's just been, it's just too convoluted. It just doesn't work. It's like, it should be better, it should be easier. Yeah. Well, I think because if we look back at the, the comic books from the, the 90s, the Batman Adventures, mm -hmm. weren't those also, oh, Ty Templeton is the, the main writer with Rick Bur uh, yeah. Burchett as the artist. Burchett was the writer, Mike, Mike Parabach and Ty Templeton were the artists, if I remember correctly. Yeah, but the if I recall, they were also working very close with Bruce Timm. Mm -hmm on those books so they had to maintain the content that's back when continuity was actually a thing but <clears throat> i don't want to i think maybe not continuity so much more than just you know i suppose not continuity of story but continuity continue continuity of look of art definitely of style yeah mm -hmm. um i just think i don't know Batman The Adventures Can Continue, I think, is um, if you like the Batman the Animated Series and you're looking for a book 
to read with your kids this could be that book if it wasn't that wordy but yeah. now it's like super wordy it's kind of like who you're aiming the book at i don't think there's enough charm to in the book to appease the batman animated series fans yeah i think it's too wordy to appease the read with kids or read with dads crowd so, so w would you say that it appeases the the fans of the animated series that weren't that aren't the diehards like us they're kind know. of the fan sitters i i don't know i'm i'm trying to find something positive I don't know. Better, I don't know. better than spirit world uh yeah better than spirit world but you know. and, and i'm that's making a stretch here <laughs> <laughs> Josh, you haven't been, you missed the last pod, which is fair enough. Um, I know you have stuff outside that is absolutely, you know, massively important. We're not going to get into it here. Um, however, you missed the discussion about the, the Flash movie. So in that vein, we've got some time to kill. Um, I would yeah. very much like to hear your opinion, sir, of uh, the Flash movie trailers. What are you looking forward to? What do you hope to see? Um, I'm, I'm definitely excited to see the the michael keaton batman the return of of the batman um i'm ex i'm also kind of excited to see how they tied it in from batman returns to now you know what what has bruce been doing we've seen in the 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 trailers a, a long hair michael keaton um and so i i want to know what what's happened between them yeah. um i'm excited to see you know, Ben Affleck's return as Batman. Uh, mm. It'll be interesting to see him in the daytime. It looks like he's is... lost a ton of weight. Yeah, and I mean, he's married to Jennifer Lopez, so I mean, maybe she's keeping him busy or he's keeping himself busy with all the Dunkin' Donuts commercials. I don't know. Um, but it'll be fun to see, see the return of him um, mm. I'm also excited to see because we know it's really kind of based off of the Flashpoint paradox. Yeah. Yep. Um, to see any any flashbacks, any f fun cameos we get mm. um, throughout the multiverse of of the films, PBN mm. films. Um, you know, who who are we going to see? I have no doubt we'll probably see Adam West. Hope so. Uh, we sure as hell better. Um, I hope to do something very similar to the Arrowverse when they did their crisis on Infinite Earths and they did a stopgap on like everybody. So you got Burt Ward from Batman 66, you, you got different things thrown in for good measure. And at the end of the show, Grant Gustin and Ezra Miller were like, Oh, oh, oh. I know that that scene was great. And um, so, I mean, if the Arrowverse can do it. But let's be honest, the the writers for the TV show have done a lot better than what we've seen in the movies. So that's got to be a big shout out to people like Mark Guggenheim, mm -hmm. um, who um, has a new Star Trek book out right now, just so go check that out, um, <clears throat> who have interviews on outside the panels for his uh, new indie stuff as well. So um, <clears throat> I think the Arrowverse, well, I would like to say, for me, at the end of Flashpoint, if Ezra does not morph into Grant Gustin, I think it is a missed opportunity for DC oh, to, whole, to, wholeheartedly. to like cut the rings and say, well, you know what? You've caused more grief than you need to, and yeah. then get rid. Because I, I understand Ezra has stuff going on. I appreciate that. But, you know, the, dude, the, the person's kind of... It's yeah, and, trouble and, I right. think... and you think to yourself, if you look at the guys over at Marvel who something happens and now they're just right, we'll just recast Khan. We'll recast Khan. You know, yeah. and and yet there's no fallout for Ezra, really? I, I think what what this will be is kind of the the end of the the Snyder verse as, as we know it. Um because in all reality Ezra Miller's the last, well, no, because Momoa's the last, because um, we still have Aquaman 2 to deal with. Well, um, 
But as far as this version of the Flash, I, I think this is going to be the the last that we okay. see. I am excited to see Kara Zorel. Mm-hmm. Um, and and to kind of go back to Man of Steel and mm-hmm. Batman v Superman and be able to relive those moments. I, I appreciate the fact that they're tying that in mm-hmm. while incorporating what we've read and seen in the animated form for the Flashpoint Paradox. Mm. So th- um, there's those tie-ins too. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing Kara. Um, I'm and looking forward to the, the Batmobile. Batmobile. And the whole thing. Um, I was going to say something there. I'd be. In, it, it, I saw Guardians Volume Three last week, um, and I came away with it. And if you want to see the rant, check out No Price Podcast because I, I, I do lose it and I rant about it quite a lot. Um, and everyone says, "Well, you don't like Marvel movies anyway, so we're not listening to you." Here's the kicker. My wife, after moving, after coming out of the movie, she turned around and said, "No, oh, well, we're not going to buy that, are we?" You know, <laughs> she hated it. You know what I'm saying? And that makes me worried for James Gunn. James Gunn has a one. To me, he seems to have a one trick. And if anything, he proved in Guardians that not every character suits the level of humor that he's going to bring to proceedings. And yeah, if you can't, okay. if you can't get humor in Marvel comics in Marvel movies. Good luck trying to get you know Batman to crack a joke. Maybe that's why he's going with Batman the Brave and the Bold. It's going to be Batman and Robin though, isn't it? Really, that's what it is. Batman and Robin. Well, yeah, but I, I mean, the first thing he's doing is Superman Legacy, which, if I understand it correctly, is going to be based off of Superman Man of Tomorrow. Did you see the news that Nicholas Holt's going to be the, the going to be the the dude in the suit? Uh, use oh, hold, let me see. He's the beast from X Men. Oh, oh, okay, First okay. Class. You know what? Um, he definitely has the Superman look. He has the jaw. <laughs> um, yeah. De- well, I mean that when they're casting Superman, that's something that they have to look at. Oh, that was the other. So we're gonna speculate for a hot minute. Go go. For I it. I had heard a speculation during. Uh, the flash that we will get a glimpse of Nicolas Cage as Superman. I've heard that whilst we get whilst we get uh, Affleck and while we get Keaton, there mm. is another Batman at the end of the movie. Oh, I heard that too. We, but you know what? We we won't throw that out there because we don't want to get your bat nipples all excited. Well, <laughs> bat nipples is the way to go because. <laughs> Allegedly, who's the three it's supposed to be? It's supposed to be Bale, Kilmer, or Clooney. Those were the three it was rumoured to be. It's rumoured to be one of those three. I I don't I don't know if it would be Kilmer. Well, it can't be Kilmer. I, I mean I mean it could be. It, it, but that that's a stretch. I mean, they really pushed it with with Kilmer and Top Gun Maverick. Uh, coming back as Iceman. But that that was the necessary character to bring back in that franchise. I don't see I don't see Kilmer. So really it's going to be between Bale or Clooney. I don't know. It it'll be it okay, so if it is Bale, I'm not gonna be surprised. If it's Clooney then that that's also giving a nod to the Schumacher movies. Well, you've also got to think that Clooney. I mean, and, Kilmer was in the Schumacher ones, but yeah. So Kilmer and Clooney, the only two that have had a Robin, other than Adam West. So if mm. Batman Brave and the Bold is going to be a Batman and Robin type of affair. And Batman <laughs> Brave of the Bold is supposed to be an older Batman anyway. So, um, mm. hmm. Interesting. I guess you know what we'll find out in the middle of June. We'll find yeah. out. So there you go. Yeah, June, June 16th. Um, funny enough, it's also my wedding anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> the day after. No, I am not taking my wife to go see The Flash on our anniversary. Oh, go for it. Um, 
Although, okay, so looking at James Holt, you know who he should have been cast as? He would have made a a phenomenal live action within the DCU, Dick Grayson. Yeah, I could say that. He would have been the perfect Nightwing. And I feel, again, a missed opportunity. We never got Nightwing. Yes, we got him in Titans. But I consider that a TV series, not going to the going to the movies, going to the cinema mm-hmm. to go see. Well, you could argue that you've had him with uh, Chris O'Donnell, to be fair. Uh, you could, um, because of the the suit that he had in Batman and just Robin. the age, just the age of him. You know, he even how... says in the Val Kilmer movie, "What would make a great sidekick name? Bat Boy, Nightwing." I know. I and that was such a cool, cool moment. I mean, he's at the age. How how old is Chris now? Um, let me look. Because if we were to get Chris O'Donnell to come back, oh no, he's in as NCISLA or something like that. Oh, he's, that, oh, he's fifty-two. Ugh, no, <laughs> he is not. I mean, he'd have to go through a major transformation to get back into hey he could be on an old it could be on old timers yes let me send an email <laughs> all right so chris we know you're watching uh hit us up uh at old un, old underscore timers on twitter um please please johnny would probably lose his marbles my wife would lose her marbles because of the whole pick me choose me Grey's anatomy thing so yeah so Chris, um, you, we still love you, even though he did Grey's Anatomy. It's fine. Don't worry. You know what? Yeah. He's he's our first movie, Robin. Yeah. Actually, nope, nope. Because we had Batman in the movie in 66. But, but Ward. So yeah. By definition, it goes to Burt Ward. Um, so, modern day Robin. There you go. Right. There you go. Four up, four down, and a chat about the Flash movie. I am sure next time around we will have more discussions as more trailers get dropped uh for the movie and of course join us in the fortnight when we get to do it all again there you go. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. uh don't forget to check out the ucpn for all your favorite shows including josh oh we've got magic crusaders um i know matthew and i haven't been able to connect and do a whole lot i've been busy with magic tournaments and life mm. um but yeah if you love magic the gathering um deck text gameplay all of it check it out cool excellent we saw the trailer for earlier k-pop cosmos which is a show once a month about k-pop styles dances videos chat about the the whole genre and of course the old timers comic book show where the hosts aren't old but the comics most certainly are and They're- make sure you all check out outside the panels with that man right there he has had some phenomenal episodes as of late, and I've been watching him. His interviews with these creators are fantastic. I'm going to toot the horn here about Outside the Panels. Thank you so much. Um, so, yeah, please take a moment. Check it out. It's great show. Uh, these creators really do um, have not only a good time talking about their books, but every episode. Johnny does a phenomenal job. Um, and and very professional too. So I learned from the best, please, Josh. I learned from take, you. Yeah. So take take the opportunity. Check out outside the panels. Uh, it really is a, a fantastic opportunity to have that sort of one on one discussion with mm-hmm. creators about their product, or their projects. So definitely, and that's across everything. We don't we do indie books, Kickstarters, and of course some big two stuff in there as well. So there you yep. go. Something for everyone. All right, Josh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Always. Glad glad I could uh, be back. And make sure you all stay tuned because we may have a little something, something coming up in the future that I will be a part of that Johnny will miss out. Boo. Boo. Um, <laughs> and I've been your host, Johnny Machine Hughes. And as always, adios.